Our goal is to figure out how to find the highest and lowest points on a function with um, multiple inputs and one output. So how are we going to do that? Now just in order to remember um, what we did in Calc 1, if we had some function and we wanted to um, find the highest and low points, highest and lowest point, like the extrema, then what we would do is we would look at the first derivative. So we would find the first derivative. If there's going to be an extreme point, then the first derivative was either going to be zero or undefined. So we started to look for places where the, where the first derivative was either zero or undefined. Um, then, once we had that, we could either, we knew that we either had a point where the derivative was undefined, so it could be perhaps a corner point or a cusp, right? Or if the derivative was zero, then we had some place where the tangent line was level. So that's what we were looking for. And then we could figure out um, whether or not it was a max or a min. It could also have been this situation <clears throat> or even something um, in between where we had a level spot but not particularly a max or a min. We called that a saddle. We could decide whether it was a max or a min either by investigating the first derivative before and after. For example, if the first derivative was positive and then, and then undefined and then negative, then we could think, okay, probably we were going up then we leveled off and then we came down. Or um, if the first derivative was negative and then zero and then positive, then we were at, um, then we would be at a min. And if the first derivative was positive and then level and then positive again, or negative and then level and negative again, we would know it was neither a max nor a min. We also, if the first derivative existed and we could find a second derivative as well, then we could examine the second derivative. So once we had sort of this critical spot where the first derivative was zero, if we looked at the second derivative at the, that same place, if the second derivative was positive, we knew that the first derivative was increasing. And so we, and if we were at a level spot, then we knew that we were at the bottom of a bowl. But if the second derivative was negative, then we knew that we were um, that the first derivative would be decreasing, so going from more positive slopes to less positive slopes, or from negative slopes to more negative slopes. So we knew that if we were at a level spot in that situation, then we must be at the top of the bowl. So that was our our first our, our first first derivative um, could help us find critical points, places where the first derivative is either zero or undefined, and then either we could use the first derivative test to determine what was going on, or we could use the second derivative test. Let's just look at an example. This function, we take the first derivative and we get 3x squared minus 3. Now that's always defined, so we'll just look for places where it is 0, and we find that we get 3x squared equals 3, so x squared equals 1, so x is plus or minus 1. These are our critical points. And since this function um, has also a second derivative, if we take the second derivative, we get 6x. We can see at the one critical point at negative 1, we get negative 6x. That must mean that our first derivative is decreasing, or negative 6 times 1, sorry. So we get negative 6 for the second derivative. Since that's negative, we know that the first derivative is decreasing, so we must be at the top of a bowl. So there must be a max when x equals negative 1. On the other hand, if we look at the second derivative at 1, we get 6 times 1, that's 6. That means the first derivative must be increasing, so going from negative to less negative or from slightly positive to more positive, we must be at the bottom of a bowl because the first derivative is increasing. So we have a max at x equals negative 1 and a min at x equals 1. We want to figure out how to do um, <clears throat> how to do something similar if there's more than one input to the function. Now we should notice at this point if you think about the Taylor polynomial, if we look at the Taylor polynomial for our function, maybe we'll just look at uh, oh, p3 of x. If we look at the Taylor polynomial at our critical point, then the, Taylor poly the first term would be the value of f at that critical point. The second term would be the value of the derivative of f at that critical point times x minus the critical point. The third term would be one-half the value of the second derivative at that critical point times x minus the critical point. 
squared plus 1 sixth the third derivative at the critical point times x minus the critical point cubed. And, so, and then we could conti continue for higher order polynomials. If we're at a critical point, then the first derivative is going to be 0, right? So that's going to wipe this term out. And that means that after the, the constant term, the next most important term is this quadratic term. And you can see that this is, this is going to be a parabola, right? And the parabola opens up depending on the sign of f double prime. So if f double prime is positive, you know you have a parabola that opens up. Right? If f double prime is negative, then um, you have this term is a parabola that opens down. And so we're kind of classifying this where we can determine what's going on by just considering what happens with the Taylor polynomial. Now, if f double prime is 0, that will wipe this term out. And so what happens is going to depend on the cubic term, right? Um, if the cubic term is, is non-zero, then we know we're going to have some kind of saddle because a cubic looks like this, right? So we'll have a, a saddle shape. But if, if the cubic term is zero, then we'd have to go to the quartic term and so on. So we'll see that we can do something a little bit similar with a function that has multiple variables.